today i am going to explain to you about the meaning of capital output ratio okay now you listen carefully capital output ratio is also called the capital coefficient and it is very important to examine the quantitative relationship between capital formation and income growth so this relation between how does the income increase and what is the relation between the formation of capital is important because for development you, uh, you require both capital formation as well as growth of income now this ratio has been used very much as a tool of policy formation and planning in developed as well as less developed countries now how do we define capital output ratio okay we you must know the definition of capital output ratio so the the capital output ratio may be defined as the relationship of investment in a given economy or industry for a given time period to the output of that economy or industry for the similar time period you listen again it may be defined as the relationship of investment in a given economy or industry for a given time period to the output of that economy or industry for a similar time period now you must remember one thing that capital output ratio is not marginal productivity of capital so you don't confuse this that capital output ratio is marginal productivity of capital so sometimes a question objective question may come for one mark that is capital output ratio and marginal productivity of capital the same yes or no okay yes or no so you have to write the no option because they are not the same now there are various types of capital output ratio i am going to explain to you one by one and i'll also give you the note which will be attached with this lecture so you listen so number 1 is average capital output ratio or acor okay acor or average capital output ratio now all these abbreviations you'll get acor icor all this you you must know the full form because the full form often comes in the exams so number 1 we come to average capital output ratio now it is defined as the ratio of existing capital stock existing capital stock to the aggregate level of current national output thus acor is equal to k by y so what is k k is the capital stock and y is the current national output so it takes into account all the investment that has taken place and the national output now we come to number 2 marginal or incremental capital output ratio so as you are from economics so you must know the meaning of marginal no so what is marginal one extra no one additional unit is the marginal so here 
we are going to discuss about marginal or incremental capital output ratio. Increment. So you know what is increment? That is additional. Marginal is also additional. Increment means also additional. So ICOR is the additional amount of capital or investment needed to produce an additional unit of output per unit of time. Thus, ICOR is equal to delta K divided by dy, where del K is equal to 1 is equal to sorry is equal to i it is the addition to the capital stock or investment and del y is the addition to national output now if we are going talking of the whole economy we have a given plan period in view so that the plan covers n years then i c o r is equal to summation of i t divided by y t plus n minus y t where t plus n is the terminal year of the plan this concept of capital output ratio is used most frequently in planning exercise in ldc's now what is ldc ldc's are less developed countries okay now we come to the third number sectoral capital output ratio sectoral so it relates to sectoral investment to sectoral output now what is sectoral sector mane ki sector mane ki khondo hone na hoy etu hoyse ki khondo bhittik khondo bhittik buli lobo lagibo so it relates to sectoral investment to sectoral output the sectoral marginal capital output ratio shows the additional investment that is needed at the sector level to attain a unit increase in output in the sector thus k1 is equal to i1 divided by delta y1 where k1 is the icor in sector 1 I1 is the investment in sector 1 and del Y1 is the increase in output in that sector. For sectoral investment planning, the estimation of sectoral ICORs is necessary. Then we come to number 4, aggregate or country-wide capital output ratio. So here the average of all the sectoral capital output ratios is taken. So if we look at the additions to output that take place as a result of additional investment at the sectoral level, then a weighted average of the three sectoral ICORs with the sectoral output serving as a weight would yield the aggregate of the countrywide capital output ratio. The Harrod-Domer model makes use of the aggregate capital output ratio. Then we come to net capital output ratio. Since capital output ratio reflects the relationship between capital at output it is necessary to isolate capital cost changes in output from other changes resulting from factors other than capital the term net incremental capital output ratio is used to cover only capital cost changes in the factors like trained manpower, entrepreneurship, etc. In other words, net ICOR has ceteris paribus assumptions, namely that supply of all other factors are held constant. So what is ceteris paribus? It means all things remain constant. Okay. Now we come to the number six. Number six, uh, that is, adjusted capital output ratio 
Here, the relationship between capital and output takes cognizance of the fact that additions to capital are accompanied by changes in other output yielding variables also. Thus, adjusted ICOR associates output changes to changes in capital or investment, recognizing that factors changing the output are many, capital being one of them, perhaps the most important one. So this you don't have to go into the details of all this but you must remember that the abbreviations that is ACOR then ICOR net ICOR all this you must remember. Now we go to the uh, <coughs> capital output ratio for developed and developing countries okay so uh, this uh, we do not, don't have to go into all the details of it that uh, but uh, we must know that this icor uh, is uh, very much important in planning and estimation of all other uh, plans and strategies for developed and developing countries. Uh, now, the question often arises is whether the ratio can be expected to be nearly the same for the developed and the developing countries or would it be higher or lower for the uh, higher for the developing countries, uh, developed countries and lower for the developing countries. So this uh, debate has been going on. Uh, this debate has been going on for ages and various economists, uh, they just uh, have their different views. Now, we don't have to go into the details. Now, let us see what are the uses of capital output ratio in planning. So, uh, planning is important no? because it is one of the most important things, uh, instruments of economic growth. And uh, it is uh, academic circles often uh, refer that all countries should undertake the path of planning. So the, what are the uses of capital output ratio in planning? It is uh, number one is it is used in plan formulation. So uh, just one or two lines you have to write down. So uh, the use of ICOR is sometimes made to answer some preliminary and macroeconomic questions. Okay, now number two, it is the basis of investment criterion. Capital output ratio is the basis of investment criterion. It has been uh, noted that um, some economists like Pollack and Buchanan have advocated the use of uh, ICOR, incremental capital output ratio, as an investment criterion. And uh, so they say that uh, the less developed countries should minimize the ICOR or maximize the uh, capital turnover. Now, next, number three, to indicate trends in factor combinations. The trends in capital output ratio pertaining to particular sectors and to the economy as a whole over time provides some insight into the trends of factor combinations as to how the factors may be combined. So this much of labor, um, this much of capital, this much of land, this much of uh, so on. Okay, so particular resources and how to maintain the growth rate of the country. So you just remember that the use of capital output ratio in planning are three. Number one, in plan formulation. Number two, basis of investment criterion. And number three, to indicate trends in factor combinations. Now, another thing you must remember is that no uh, instrument or no strategy or no theory is without any defect no, in economics. So uh, in the same way for capital output uh, ratio also there are certain limitations. 
so limitations or demerits or drawbacks so uh, supposing in your question uh, if instead of limitations it, they, it may be the question may come drawbacks so uh, it may come what are the demerits so you just don't think that this uh, this thing has not been taught in the class okay so it means the same tamane okubidha homuh ki capital output ratio okubidha homuh ki hei kotha tu ami alop janibo lage now the just the points you just know the number one limitation is the problem of cooperant factors uh, so uh, in the capital output ratio output is related to capital in a certain predictable manner only if cooperant factors that means other factors like trained manpower entrepreneurial ability infrastructural facilities are available but in underdeveloped countries the supply of cooperant factors cannot be taken it for granted see in presently can we take anything for granted in assam can we take anything uh, granted in sirang or in bisni no we can't no so we cannot take anything for granted how can we say that we'll get train manpower how can we say that there is infrastructure facilities how can we uh, just take it for granted about entrepreneurial ability now we come to number 2 that is too much emphasis on investment the concept of capital output ratio lays too much emphasis on investment for expansion of output so it's only for investment no insistence on investment implies taking a too mechanical view of the problem of capital formation for development which comprises growth plus change so this is also one limitation okay then third comes the problem of time lag the investment in the concept of capital output ratio relates to current year while output relates to some year or years in the future it may be the future or it may be uh, the past also no because some things uh, uh, certain production starts now uh, but we get the result say after one year so this is also one uh, limitation besides there are also certain difficulties in the measurement of capital then we come to number 4 that is not much suitable for making investment decisions it's not very much suitable for uh, taking investment decisions so how can we say that this much ca capital output ratio you give and then you will give uh, get uh, this much product this much tons and everything will be fine and you will get this much of earnings it it's not like that no it's not much suitable for making investment decisions now so this is uh, uh, the discussion and we must remember that the limitations suggest that uh cap that uh, certain precautionary measures or certain portions must be taken in making uh the capital output ratio as a tool of planning okay now with this uh this is your which paper this is your 4.2 paper no 4.2 paper so uh often uh, objective questions come on capital output ratio and i'll be giving you the um, notes uh, you write uh, write it down and i am giving the notes from economics of development and planning by taneja and mayer so uh, together with this clip you'll get the notes okay thank you